way cap. In the case of bangles, I wanted to tell a story about jewelry and how we basically wear them as Africans. I mean, taking inspiration from the pictures I saw as a child, growing up seeing titled women with beads and bangles and all of that. So I just had this moment that just came and I was having a conversation with a friend and she just gave out that expression and then I captured it and then of course added every other thing like the bangles and the pattern and the drawing and once that digital part is done it's as good as a file that is ready to go as an NFT but then I proceed and make it tangible and use technology um, I use technology a lot in my work fusing indigenous ideas with means using technology so again i use technology to transfer those drawings without the colors onto any material i like after that we would there's a lot of other materials coming i can say that the second set i'm working on now will be on fabric or maybe on fabric it's been a long journey trying to get this done and yeah do it properly because i know it's possible but the challenge is who can do it properly. Right, got lots of tech issues in terms of being able to get the right wood, starting with the wood, joining the wood, getting the size that I want, and then of course um, the right technology, whether it's going to be laser or CNC. Yeah, so it's been a tough, long journey. But here we are, about to have the first one. So yeah, I'm excited and happy. Actually, I think it's quite exciting because now we're getting African artists who are embracing digital fabrication as part of the entire process. Something that's been going on globally for I don't know how long, but we're just catching up to it now. So. I'm excited about it, definitely. It looks good. I think it looks very good and I think it opens up a lot more ways to for artists to express themselves in Africa as well. It's a big step. New tools, new medium, new processes. So we'll see how it goes. So now we're going to wait for the shellac to dry for about 20 minutes. Then we apply the, the India ink, sand back and do the contrast review. So that's when everything should really pop. It's a beautiful thing going on. Um, 
um, there's a lot of creativity that has found um, its way into the marketplace and into the minds and hearts of people all over the world and people are beginning to know more about Africa and hearing our stories. Um, the existence of the blockchain itself um, has also again provided some authenticity and provenance. However, it has also lowered the entry barrier in the sense that anybody that creates anything using any digital tool uh, somewhat has now started wearing that toga an artist. Um, an artist basically is a professional creator that lives off what they do and um, you begin to see how that also fits into um, description for anyone that just jumps into the space. Um, um, yeah, they are artists. But again, there's a standard, there's a practice, uh, uh, um, there's something going on. Um, it's actually a real proper profession. And um, while we then now have a whole um, universe open to us and for us to showcase who we are, which is a good thing, um, there's a lot more that then needs to be done in terms of uh, curation um, because we need to then properly tell stories as opposed to having all that out there uh, it becomes a bit chaotic but it's good it's a, it's a process it's a trajectory that we're going through so we are now at the phase where um, everyone can at the least express themselves and put out their work um, this is notwithstanding obviously the cash grabs that it's also um, enabled but i'm speaking to art and artists basically um, in the digital space there's a lot that can be done now we can create a lot more faster um, we can say a lot more we can reach out to a global audience and we are now building communities around our creation so it's it's a good thing but we also need to then be responsible in terms of then um, curating this story and saying the right things or the things that we hope would um, um, bring back the kind of uh, positioning that we want for ourselves as Africans. So the existence of digital art and its emergence and increasing use in Africa is a very welcome development that is clearly going to be um, leapfrogging the digital art practice. I mean, it's going to be leapfrogging the entire art practice as a whole um, in Africa. Okay, so for me, at the core of it is solution development. Um, when you want to solve a problem of a particular geographical location and the people in, uh, inhabiting that location, you need to get them involved and the process of bringing people together is at the heart of creativity and design to come up with solutions for themselves either by way of them telling their own stories um, or them creating their own products or them creating their own policies and governance systems it's all creativity right and the only way the only vehicle in which you can create something on a communal level and make it a thing that benefits everybody is through entrepreneurship, right? That is what, that is the vehicle upon which um, innovation and idea creation and creativity and all of that is then passed on and made something that is spread on a societal level, right? So if you take out the, if you look at the Nigerian music industry, for instance, you would see that all of that content is being passed through entrepreneurship, other by way of uh, uh, music creation, recording, distribution, promotion, all of that, all of those are uh, SMEs, entrepreneurship, uh, as is the case. So, the, the role of creative is in creativity, is in rooting it in the realities of the people, in their existence, in their truths, right? So, it has to be done by the people. And the people need to use the vehicle that converts that message, which is entrepreneurship. I'm trying to get into a space where I use art to, to 
basically put out in spaces where um, people don't expect so not the traditional high towers of some nice gallery or for some collector to pick up but how do I use art to infuse in the environment could it be from skyscrapers could it be projected on the water can I have an airplane uh, move this um, I, I the, the guy called JR comes to my mind what he's done with um, very massive scale picture installations um, but I think I want my installations to be kind of permanent in the environment so if I have my work as a facade on the building then it's going to be there permanently um, but I like scale and the fact that I am experimenting on putting things where people can then um, enjoy it and interact with it in a new way. And then of course the art existing on both planes because for everything I want to do that is tactile uh, there's always going to be that um, digital bit of it which is also part of its creation that will be logged on the blockchain that then authenticates the tactile one. So yeah it's very interesting for me. I'm very excited and hoping to see how people receive it. Um, yeah because on this uh, I always say there are three um, responses that people have for a piece of work created especially an artwork for instance it's either they tell you yes okay no or wow and i think with the recent pieces that i've done um, that are existing on both planes i've gotten a hundred percent wow and for me that has never happened and yeah i'm looking forward to more wows <laughs>